On Sunday, October 1st, at the Southern Vermont Arts Center, Earth Matters, a local environmental group, hosted Bill McKibben, a well-known activist, author, and environmentalist, who was one of the first to raise alarms about climate change and global warming through his book, published in 1989, titled The End of Nature. Through his organization, 350 Vermont, he continues an active schedule of events and his advocacy for taking steps to mitigate the worst effects of climate change and in favor of a transition to renewable energy sources. The event was part of McKibben's Empower VT tour, which is making stops in several spots around Vermont to spread information about current sources for electricity and how carbon emissions could be reduced. He was joined at the Arts Center's Arkell Pavilion by Thomas Hand, a local entrepreneur who works in the solar field, and the two of them made presentations to an audience there. Before the event got underway, we had a chance to talk to Professor McKibben, who teaches at Middlebury College. What do you see as kind of the biggest obstacles to a transition to renewables and away from fossil fuels? Uh, I mean, there's lots of obstacles. It's hard to make a big transition like this in a fundamental part of our economy. It would be hard if everybody was making a good faith effort but of course the fossil fuel industry is doing just the opposite. They've spent the last 30 years lying about the need for this problem, pretending that climate change wasn't real, and uh, overstating the difficulties of this transition, that somehow we won't be able to run the world on uh, renewable energy. Happily, undaunted, scientists and engineers have kept at their work and over that period, they've dropped the price of renewable energy 90%. We now live on a planet where the cheapest way to produce power is to point a sheet of glass at the sun. There's no longer a true technical or financial barrier to moving quickly. There's just the barriers of inertia and vested interest, which are always strong. We're not going to stop global warming at this point. That option's no longer on the menu. Um, we may still be able to stop it short of the point where it cuts civilization off at the knees, but we don't know. I mean, Vermont got a pretty good taste this summer of what's, <laughs> what kind of world we're building. Um, and, uh, you know, it strained our ability to deal with it. Our capital city is still a ghost town, um, you know, because, we've, because of the flooding. Um, and our travails were minor compared to lots of other places. Uh, you know, Libya had the worst rainstorm they've ever had, the kind of rain you can only get on a globally warmed planet. And there's, you know, that rain overwhelmed two dams and washed 10,000 people out to sea where they drowned. Um, so um, that's the world we're in right now. It will get worse before it gets better because there's a lot of momentum in this system. The hope is that if we move quickly enough, we can arrest the rise of temperature sometime in the next 10 or 20 years, and that that'll give us enough margin to start adapting. Thomas Hand and Bill McKibben were preceded by a general conversation and presentation about renewable energy and its transition, led by Rebecca Dolgan of 350 Vermont and Daniel Laberge of Grassroots Solar a local solar installation firm based in Dorset. They focused especially around the issue of electricity, since that will be the power source that is poised to replace fossil fuel-based ones. Where would it come from? And how much is needed? And there was also a discussion about the state's renewable energy standards. Under current law, the Renewable Energy Standard, or RES, says that just 75% of our electricity needs to come from renewables like wind, solar, and hydropower by 2032. Renewable electricity standards are policies designed to increase the use of renewable energy sources for electricity generation. I have to remember, though, that there is no 100% perfect electricity generation solution, which means ultimately we also need to think about how do we use less. I also want to name that we need so we are we do absolutely need solar to meet our energy needs, and we need to talk about how solar is done within our uh, within our movement and as a community. So 
one thing to think about is where our solar our minerals used in solar and wind tech come from. So NIMBY is the uh, acronym for not in my backyard, right? That's a great point. The question is what we do want to see and also, you know, if we are not seeing it in our backyard, then it's being produced in someone else's backyard. We're exporting that energy burden. So we need a powerful and even more vocal yes in my backyard um, counter movement um, so that you actually see the forms of your energy production and that we really celebrate those and find you know, the energy independence we're getting from those sources being close at hand and produced in our neighborhoods, like finding that beautiful, finding what's beautiful about it. Thomas Hand followed them with a wide-ranging talk, which included a discussion of the difficulties of getting renewable energy projects like wind and solar moving. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what it means to be a developer, because it goes to these questions of deciding how do we build it, where do we put it, that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm not gonna go through this in a, in a ton of detail, but you can quickly see from the, uh, from the timelines here that it takes years, right, to develop a project. And many of these, all these steps are, are really necessary. Um, and the only thing that we really can do, I would say on the permitting side, there's a lot of discussion of permitting reform. Fundamentally what we need to do is we need to change the rest. If we change the res and we acknowledge that we need to build renewable energy, both in state and out of state, what we will find is that many of these steps just start to resolve themselves. That, that's my personal feeling. And then it was a turn of Bill McKibben, who encouraged those in attendance to continue the struggle and to keep the urgency of moving forward as quickly as possible before a tipping point is reached that is too hard to reverse. We've just come through on this planet the hottest summer by far that we have ever had. Beginning in June, scientists that I've known for years started calling me saying, look, the numbers are getting really weird here. June and July, we had temperature readings around the Earth. The globally average temperature was the hottest that we've ever recorded. Our records go back about 200 years, but we have good proxy records ice cores and things that take that record back much further. It's very clear that in June and July, the temperatures were higher on this planet than they've been in at least 125,000 years, which means that no human society that we would recognize has ever lived through anything like this. It's continuing. September is going to be more anomalous compared to all the Septembers in the past than June, July, and August were. We're gonna go past that 1.5 degrees Celsius mark, at least temporarily probably in November, and as El Nino continues to ramp up, we're gonna see even higher values. We know what this does, we see it around the world. And finally, we met up with Thomas Hand outside the Arkell Pavilion for his takeaways from the event. The first step is acknowledging that we need to build renewable energy. The second step is acknowledging that Vermonters really need to do it themselves. Not entirely themselves. It doesn't have to be only in state or just Vermonters, but if you want to be able to turn on the lights and drive your car and heat your house with electricity, then Vermont needs to build renewable energy and it needs to build at least a significant portion of it in state because otherwise you're just asking somebody else to solve your problem for you. And, and while the other New England states are, are good neighbors, I would say, the idea that we can just expect them to do their share and our share, uh, that doesn't strike me as fair or, or the right way forward. So I really think the first step um, is acknowledging that we need to build it and that we need to build a, a significant portion in state. Um, and then I think once you acknowledge that Vermonters are pretty good at getting things done, I don't think building it's all that difficult. I think deciding to build it is the hard part. For the GNET TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.